Hello, 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 hello! Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Good day to our teachers, advisors, student council members of Youth Formation Division of the PED. Nakakatuwa po makita po tayong lahat kahit hindi po tayo magkakasama ngayon. But nonetheless, I'd like to welcome you to Introduction to Digital Citizenship. So ito po ay parte ng programa ng Digital Tayo at ang goal po natin kasi sa Digital Tayo ay magkaroon or itong tatlong pillars na nakikita po natin sa screen. We want to build awareness, educate, and help you become thought leaders. So ano ba or kung bakit ba tayo nandito? Well, this is a collaboration with different organizations from around the Philippines. And of course, ang aim po natin dito is to help the youth, um, teachers, OFWs, parents, and whoever to become digital citizens. And take note of that term, digital citizens, kasi later on malalaman natin kung gaano ka-importante ang pagiging ganito. So let's get the ball rolling. Start na po tayo. Dere-derecho na po natin ang ating pag-uusap tungkol sa introduction to digital citizens. Ang una po natin kailangan malaman is paano ba natin ginagamit ang social media. Kasi ang topic natin ngayong araw na to ay patungkol sa social media and how we could use it. So ito ang slide natin on me and social media. So take note that this module is will help you know and become digital responsible citizens in order for you to navigate the online world and to know how to protect yourself and other people as well. Kasi kita naman natin dito sa screen na to, may iba't ibang rason tayo kung ba tayo nagso-social media. Baka yung isa, ilan sa inyo bilang mga student leaders ginagamit ng social media sa pag-share ng information tungkol sa mga proyekto or tungkol sa eskwelahan natin. Or para sa mga guru naman natin, baka ginagamit natin ang social media sa pakikipag-usap sa ating mga estudyante at mga magulang na rin. So binang malaking parte ng ating buhay ang social media, syempre gusto po natin ito gamitin ng, syempre na may responsibilidad. Kaya po ang um, alamin po natin kung paano to. So to do this, let's first understand what digital citizens is or what is the term or what What's digital citizens per se? So, ang pagiging digital citizen ay nagsasabi, ay nagpapakita na meron siyang kaalaman at may kakayahan para gamitin ang social media, ang internet, and other digital tools responsibly. So, kung kayo po ay gumagamit ng internet and digit, other digital tools responsibly, automatic po. Kayo po ay isang digital citizen. So, paano ba natin ito? Kunwari naman inland sa inyo nagtatanong, yes, ginagamit ko naman responsibly, pero syempre gusto ko pa matuto ng mas marami pa at gusto ko pa malaman kung paano ko ito mas magagamit ng mas mabuti. So, that brings us to our next question. How do we become a digital citizen? It's easy. So, tara, simulan na natin ang ating discussion. So, ang DepEd Youth Formation Division, ang mga youth natin, ang ating mga teachers, ang mga student council members natin, I'm sure we can all become digital citizens in our own way by protecting oneself, our family and friends, and our community. These are the three aspects of being a responsible digital citizen. And to start off our discussion, let us start by talking about how we could be responsible and how we could we protect ourselves. First things first, the thing that you have to know is that in anything that we do online, we leave a mark. And we call this mark the digital footprint. And digital footprint ay kahit anong behavior na ginagawa mo online. Mapapost man yan, mapashare man yan, mapalike man yan, mapasali um, sa grupo, mapashare ng informasyon tungkol sa sarili nyo, mapamessage uh, man yan sa mga kasama natin. That is the mark that we leave. So any online behavior that you do will leave an impression on other people. And other people has access to this as well. So depending how you manage your account, baka marami po ang makakakita ng mga behavior na to. So what are the things that people see online in regards to your footprint? Ito po siya. Profile and personal information, post, messages, and what you share and like. And those who could see is depending on your privacy settings, but mostly your, your online friends or your relationships. And from these things that they see, they could get the following information or this, the following things. Images, 
social media accounts, schools, jobs and employer, new news and stories, and of course, community or social groups that you are part of. So basically, lahat ng information na to ay makukuha nila sa social media. So other people could actually just search you online, search for your name, and then get information from you. So for example, nag-post kayo na fake news. Tapos, long ago pa yon, tapos biglang may nag-search ng inyong pangalan sa social media, tapos nakapublic siya. Hindi makikita na nag-share kayo ng fake news. And on top of this, yung personal information natin, um, kunwari, ang birthday natin, ang full name natin, ang kung anong, kung saan tayo nakatira, these are information that um, could identify you. So the next question that we have is, how do we protect this? Especially the digital identity that we have. How do we protect all of this? Well, there are three ways. Basically, the three ways is of are, of course, to choose the content that you show to other people, be wary of abusive content, and secure your account. So, isa isahin po natin to para malaman niyo kung paano. So, of course, one thing that you have to take note of is that you have to be your authentic self. Bawal po tayo kumamit ng mga um, fake names. Hindi po natin pwede ipeke ang ating edad kasi alalahanin po natin sa Facebook pero po tayong age na kailangan sundan. On top of this, syempre, kailangan din po natin piliin ang mga kaibigan natin na ina sa Facebook wisely. So, if ever may ma-add po kayo tapos hindi nyo naman po talaga siya gusto or nararamdaman nyo na hindi safe environment na pag nandun siya, you could automatically or you could unfriend, unfollow, and block. On top of this, syempre, gusto din po natin na kontrolado ang makakakita ng ating mga post. So, choose your audience wisely. Be careful on the, um, be wary of the people you share your post with. Long story short, alalahanin lang po natin na meron tayong kailangan na sundan ng mga standards. Ang standards na to ay tinatawag po natin na Facebook Community Standards. Kumbaga, ito po yung student handbook na meron tayo sa ating eskwelahan. I'm sure bilang mga student leaders and as well as um, teacher advisors, you are well aware of this, um, what we call this, this handbook. And Facebook has this as well. So when you look at this, there are rules and regulations that you have to follow. And when you violate the community guidelines, your content or yourself may be deleted. Because Facebook can remove the content itself or your account, especially if you violate any of the community standards on Facebook. And other people can um, report you, nonetheless. And you could report other people as well. And that, com that brings us to our next point. Beware or be wary of abusive content. Kasi minsan may mga tao na may uh, ibang agenda. Sometimes they want to scam you. Money theft, identity theft, phishing, uso-uso to. In these cases, pwede po natin i-report uh, mga to. Pwede po natin um, i-report na it goes against the community standard. And when we do this, um, there is an extra layer of safety or there is safety in the community because you reported abusive content. But what about for yourself? How do we protect ourselves? We protect ourselves by securing our accounts, secure login and log out, you by, and making sure that you use strong passwords. So, ang paano natin mapaprotektahan ang login and log out natin? Siyempre, mayroon po tayong settings, and pwede rin po tayong kumamit ng security checkup. Sa security checkup, makikita po natin ang mga informasyon tungkol sa kung ano mga settings ang pwede natin gamitin para increase ang safety natin online. On top of this, pwede rin po natin i-open ang two-factor authentication. Now, going back to what we were saying a while ago, syempre gusto po natin na protectado tayo with our password. So, ang password po dapat natin has a combination of small and big letters and of course have different characters. And lastly, is not too short. And we, when we do all this, remember that there are other things that we could add on. For example, pwede po tayo mag-set ng location privacy. Pwede rin po natin gamitin yung privacy, privacy settings. Pwede rin po natin gamitin yung security settings. And all of these are on Facebook. In terms of our privacy checkup, ito po ang ating mga um, proseso kung paano natin gagawin ito. Maari nyo po itong is screen capture na lang po and makakatulong po talaga to para makita ano pang pwede natin gawin. And sa privacy checkup, ito po yung mga informasyon na makukuha ninyo. A, B, C, D, and E. And of course, to sum it all up, 
alalahanin lang po natin na tayo ay may control kung ano ang pwede natin sabihin sa ibang tao or, or malalaman ng ibang tao patungkol sa atin. So just remember, set your strong password, enable login alerts, activate login approvals, and log out of unused devices. And lastly, do the security checkup. And when you are done with all of that, you become a responsible digital citizen by protecting yourselves. Next up, of course, gusto po rin natin makrotektahan ang ating mga pamilya at kaibigan. And to do this, one thing that you have to remember is that you are talking to a person on the other side of the screen. And remembering this, the key word is, of course, empathy. Kasi empathy is our ability to really feel what other people are feeling and experiencing from the point of view of other people. So, kumbaga, nilalagay natin ang ating sarili sa sapatos or sa lugar ng ibang tao. Very powerful po ang empathy. And with empathy, we could actually practice positive online engagement. So we could do this by knowing your audience, knowing your place, or rather place ourselves in the shoes of others, by treating everyone as, uh, as important, by being open, and of course, by being sensitive to the environment that we are in. So when you do all of this, we remember that we are on in a safe environment. Please don't forget empathy. Kasi minsan sa sobrang dami nating emosyon na nararamdaman, nakakalimutan na natin, uy, kaibigan ko pala siya. Uy, kaklase ko pala siya. Uy, pamita ko pala siya. Remember, respect comes a long way. And when you practice empathy and you practice positive online engagement, then you will be able to become responsible digital citizens on your own um, on your own way. So now that we have an understanding of how we could protect ourselves, we could protect our family, our friends. The last thing that we have to remember is we don't just protect us or ourselves and our family and friends. We should also protect our community. How do we protect them? Well, the thing is, we have a lot of information online, and these informations are something that we share. Minsan, itong mga informasyon na to ay pinapakita natin sa ibang tao. At ang importante natin malaman dito na may iba't ibang klase ng informasyon. Pwede ito maging fact, opinion, or false news, or false information. So these are the different types of information. As much as we like to share all the information that we see online, Remember that these are the things that you have to consider na iba-iba nga siya. So ano nga bang fact, opinion, or false news? Pinakamadali yung fact. Fact is basically something that is true, meaning it can be proven. So ito yung mga bagay na based sa evidence, research with solid backing from reliable sources or individuals. Hindi po ito based sa TikTok. Hindi rin po ito based sa mga fake news peddlers, sa mga bloggers, sa vloggers. Based po ito sa um, reliable sources. Yes, pwede naman po magsabi ng um, facts ang mga vloggers, mga tiktokers, yun yung, yung, yung tawag, at mga vloggers themselves. But remember, look at the sources because that's when you know that this is based on evidence, research with solid backing from reliable sources or individuals. For example, itong imahe na ito, masasabi natin ang image na ito ay isang apple and it is a fact. On the other hand, mayroon naman tayong tinatawag na opinion, something that cannot be proven. So something that cannot be proven is some, maybe someone's interpretation of something. This can be a thought of someone from the internet about a matter. This means an opinion may be based on someone's viewpoint or point of view. Kung bagan, may nakikita ang isang tao na apple sa kanyang bahay. And then sinabi niya, dahil yun lang nakikita niyang apple, this is the only apple in the city. But when he goes out and see other, see other apples, then he finds out that there are other apples in the city itself. So that's fact, opinion, and the last thing, and something that we should be very, very worried about is false news. Because false news is dangerous. So determining fact from opinion is a bit easy, but sometimes people present their opinions as fact facts. Or worse, some people would add details that aren't necessarily true and present them as illegitimate information. Yan po ang false news. Sabi ko nga may mga consequences ang false news and ito yung mga examples. Damage reputations, deceiving, deceiving and affects personal safety and causes fear or panic. 
Katulad ng pagkakaroon ng fake news na hashtag walang pasok, nakakatuwa. Pero nakakalungkot rin. The thing is, false news could affect people's life. In reality, these false pieces of information has real-life consequences. And we should do our part in protecting other people, our friends, our families, and our communities against these false information. So how do we do this? How do we know if the news article post is real or false? Well, there are simple things that you could do. Itong lahat na to ay mga bagay na kailangan natin gawin. But the thing that I'd like to highlight is this one, on trustworthy sources, and of course, the author and hoax, and this one, unrecognized author and hoax and humor. So simula tayo sa hoax and humor. Tingnan muna natin yung article. Yung article man na to ay kinagamit ng mga tao para mag-invoke ng kakatawahan, or seryoso ba sila sa pagsusulat ng article na to or ng video na to? And tingnan din po natin, sino ba nagsulat na to? Check and see whether or not the author is of good standing. Google him, see his background, see him, his or her background, and um, verify siya ba ay reliable source. source. And the last thing that I'd like to um, share with you or give emphasis is, emphasize, emphasize on, is on trustworthy sources. Minsan kasi nagsasite nga ng mga information or ng mga sources ang ating mga bloggers, bloggers, tiktokers, pero hindi naman trustworthy sources. So unang kailangan natin gawin, highlighting everything, all of this, unang kailangan po natin gawin is una, check natin yung video itself or yung um, material itself. Does it seem to be false news? If it's yes, um, then pass. If it's a no, then look at the author, look at the source, and go and dive deep and understand if this information is true or false. At pag nakita po natin na hindi ito totoo, syempre kailangan din po natin ito i-report. Sa Facebook, meron po tayong tinatawag na um, reporting of um, post. So when you see false information, ito po ang pwede natin gawin. And syempre, pag ginawa po natin ito, makakatulong po tayo sa ating komunidad. Alalahanin natin na ginagawa po natin ito para hindi lamang para sa sarili natin. Ginagawa natin to para sa ibang tao na kasama natin sa bahay, sa eskwelahan, at syempre sa komunidad. Gusto ko lang po sabihin na maraming, maraming, maraming false information na nakikita po natin online. And napakahirap po isipin na may naniniwala dito. So ako po ay naniniwala na bilang mga student leaders, bilang mga um, faculty or teacher advisors who are inspiration to our students, we ourselves do a part in making sure that what's online is only truth. We should avoid false information. So bring out your thinking caps, alibas natin yung magnifying glasses natin, and remember, not everything that you see online is facts. So yan po ang informasyon na gusto po namin ipakita sa inyo. Malalahanin po natin na tayo ay pwedeng maging responsible digital citizens. Alalahanin na po natin na kailangan siyempre natin protektahan ang ating sarili sa pamamagitan ng pagkakaroon ng seguridad sa ating mga accounts. Malalahanin din po natin na kailangan po natin protektahan ang ating pamilya at kaibigan sa pagsisigurado na tayo ay nagkakaroon ng empathy and positive online engagement. And siyempre, paprotektahan natin ang ating komunidad sa pagkakaroon po or sa pagsisigurado na ating mga informasyon na pinapakita or papalaganap ay hindi false news. So yun lang po muna. Kung kayo po ay may mga katanungan pa, maaari naman po kayo pumunta sa Facebook Help Center. May mga common questions po na makikita kayo dito. And sa ngayon, ayun lang po muna. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. And naniniwala po ako, bilang mga student leaders, bilang mga faculty or teacher advisors of DepEd Youth Formation Division, you have and you can become responsible digital citizens. Maraming maraming salamat po ulit. And of course, as always, laban lang. Ingat!